Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are bringing you through how we meal prep and I would say we meal prep a little bit different than the average meal prep you see on social media. Yeah, I mean we don't focus on, you know, meal by meal breakdowns. It's all about batch cooking and getting as much done as we can as quick as we can because obviously life is pretty busy. So we don't focus on what am I having for meal one, for meal two, for meal three. It's about creating convenience and stuff to grab on the go throughout the day. So we're going to just show you how we prep our main protein sources and veggies today. Um, and we'll kind of talk you through different tips and tricks that we teach our clients and that we try to tell you guys as well um, to bring you through this a little bit easier than you know separating each container piece by piece, meal by meal throughout the week. So on the menu today is we are going to do some buffalo chicken meatballs. That's my dad's recipe. And what are, what's your opinion on the meatballs? They're good, they just take a long time to make. That probably takes the longest out of everything we're doing today. So we'll do buffalo chicken meatballs. I'm gonna do some grass-fed ground beef burgers. And then we're also just gonna do regular chicken breast. Um, kind of a healthier... Um, chicken nugget. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. So we'll bring you through that, and then as far as veggies, we're gonna just roast some bell peppers to keep on hand, asparagus, and I'm gonna show you how I make my little baby potatoes over here. So we're going to prep everything, get it cooked, we'll show you the end results, and like I said, tips and tricks coming your way. So the buffalo chicken meatballs are one of our favorites, which is the only reason why I do this, because my rule of thumb of meal prep is short and sweet. So it's usually the basics, we can throw some different seasonings on, make it more exciting each week that way, but I don't like spending a ton of time doing this stuff because I don't have a ton of time. So this is the one thing that I spend time doing it with. Um, recipe is for every pound of ground chicken is an egg and a cup of breadcrumbs. Sometimes I go a little lighter with the breadcrumbs just because there's a lot left over and they get kind of dry. Uh, but typically two to three cups of breadcrumbs, prep them all, bake them on 400 for 15 minutes, pull them out and you throw them in the slow cooker with the buffalo sauce for another two hours on high. And a question we get all the time is, do you weigh your meat raw versus cooked? So if you're tracking macros, you're tracking the protein in the meat that you're eating. And people get really confused as far as, like, do I weigh these meatballs, for example, before we cook them, or do we weigh them after we cook them and track it that way? So, so if you don't want to throw saran wrap over a food scale, and you'd rather just weigh it out once it's cooked, um, that's perfectly fine, just make sure you're doing that all the time. If you do want to do the weigh-in first, like I said, just throw strand wrap over that scale like I do with the meatballs. Each meatball is going to be two ounces. Prep that, throw it on the pan, and then I don't have to measure that once I am ready to eat it. It's just pick it up, I know that's two ounces. And in the app that we use to track, we use the My Macros Plus app. You can save something like this as a recipe, so you can input all the ingredients that we're using here and you input the total amount and then input about how many servings that you're going to get from the recipe so at the end we'll count how many meatballs we have and then it automatically divides everything out for you guys and we'll tell you what the macros are per meatball so that's how we figure that out um, so josh is going to start by doing that since that takes the longest and then i'm going to finish feeding the baby and start on both the burgers and the chicken nuggets one more tidbit on the raw versus cooked if you do it cooked, if you weigh them out cooked, make sure you're taking out 25%. So when you're weighing it out when it's raw, let's say you're looking at four ounces of chicken, four ounces of chicken is four ounces of chicken. When you're weighing it out cooked, three ounces of chicken is technically four ounces of chicken because when you cook it, it loses 25% of that weight. So that's how you really fine tune and get it as accurate as it can be. A little pro tip. So Kai just went down for a nap. I'm going to bang out as much of this as I can before he wakes up. So I'm going to start with the chicken breasts or the chicken nuggets, uh, healthy chicken nuggets that we're doing. All we're using again is the same breadcrumbs that Josh is using for the meatballs. Um, a little bit of regular flour and a couple eggs and I'm just going to take the chicken breasts out. I'm going to slice them up first so they're a bit smaller and then I'm going to just dip them in the flour, the egg and then the breadcrumbs and then lay them on the cookie sheet. All right, so chicken is done. Chicken meatballs are in the process of being done. I'm gonna have you <laughs> chop up the veggies. Peppers, asparagus, and then I'm gonna throw the potatoes on another sheet and get those prepped. 
I got yelled at for putting habaneros in this last time. Oh yeah, that was a funny story. So we had everybody over, his whole family was over, or no, was it my family? No, it was your family. And Josh put, he chopped up a bunch of bell peppers. What other kinds of peppers are in there? Jalapenos, poblanos, and three habaneros. And the whole house smelled so, I, I was literally coughing, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and the whole house, smelled so bad I had to take the baby upstairs and one bite of this stuff and his brother. Nobody could eat the quesadillas. <laughs> we had to throw away the quesadillas. I, I ate them. I ate all of them the next day. Josh is the only one that could eat them. <laughs> so this is like the holy grail of seasonings that we use. So this is my dad's favorite combination. We put it on everything from chicken to veggies to the potatoes. So I think the biggest issue with why people don't like veggies or why they don't tend to enjoy their healthy eating is because they're not seasoning their foods right. Um, so don't be afraid to use different sauces and seasonings. We do like barbecue chicken, obviously the buffalo sauce for the meatballs today, um, and then just like olive oil. What else do we use? There's so many different types of seasonings that you can use. Um, vinegar. Vinegar. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So don't cook your stuff plain. I feel like that's when it gets really boring and it just does not taste as good. Boring. <laughs> so I'm going to chop up the asparagus and saute that. Josh is doing the peppers with the garlic and then the potatoes are also going to have this stuff on them too. And those are going to go in the oven after the chicken is done. So rice is super boring too. This is just something where we'll prep all this like in a stir fry and throw it on top of like chicken and rice and all of a sudden it's a banging meal. And the rice that we use is, we honestly just buy the ready rice just because they're super fast, they're convenient, um, and there's all different kinds that you can get. We Sometimes we'll eat brown rice, this one is the long grain and wild, sometimes it's jasmine rice, so it really just depends what kind of dish we're making or what we're in the mood for, um, but we'll you know, use all of these things that we're cooking to make different meals. So let's say for dinner one night we'll do a rice bowl with the veggies on it and the chicken and then the next day I'll make a salad and I'll throw a couple meatballs on it. That's just the oven. Um, and then the next day we'll do like potatoes chopped up with the veggies and the beef burger patty on it. So you can kind of just take all of these things and make a bunch of different meals with them instead of just making set separate meals for the week and then getting really bored of them. That's kind of why we choose to batch prep. Um, and the other reason why we choose to batch prep is because Josh just eats a lot more than I do. So if we just have like all of this chicken in a bin, he can take the amount that he needs to eat out of it. I can take the amount that I need and we can just make meals based off of that. So that's why we do it this way. All right, so we're just kind of waiting for everything to be finished now. Everything's kind of cooking. Um, I would say that on a normal day, this that whole prepping process takes no more than, I don't know, 35 to 45 minutes. But since we're filming and you know getting different shots, it took a little bit longer today. And then the meatballs, obviously, like we said, take the longest to cook at a couple hours. But everything else is about to be done within the next 20 minutes tops or so. Um, so for the people who say, you know, I really don't have time to meal prep or they can't find time in their schedule, we kind of just explain it to them like this, like it really doesn't take too long to prep a lot of food at once, right? Yeah, you got to keep in mind you're not doing every single meal for every single day and throwing it all on individual Tupperwares. Keep it simple, make it convenient, do your batch cook, have everything there that's convenient you can grab on the go throughout the day as you need to, um, but it, it shouldn't take the excessive amount of time. It's just something you can do at the end of the day. If you're, if you're busy running around, it's something you need to do on a Sunday. You literally need to find, you could get this done in about 30 minutes if you needed to. So. And then another thing a lot of people tend to bring up as far as buying foods fresh or frozen is they, they feel like buying frozen veggies, for example, is really bad. And to be honest, I'd rather a client eat frozen veggies than no veggies at all, and there really is not that much of a difference. Frozen veggies were fresh at one point in time. So, you know, we tend to buy frozen bro broccoli or cauliflower or things like that. Um, I really don't think it's a huge deal. And then, as far as keeping your meal simple and using recipes, if you notice, we're not the type that are going to sit here and make a full recipe out of a cookbook or something that we found on a blog just because 
one, when you're tracking macros, that's going to take a lot more time. And we try to explain that to a lot of our clients who are new to tracking is keep it really simple when you're starting off. You don't want to try to do these intricate recipes. You can do that, and there are ways to go about tracking those things, but that's going to be, I would say, um, the next level up. So work for that when you're comfortable with tracking initially. Use sauces, use spices to kind of mix things up and keep things interesting, but I would recommend keeping the recipes for date night and having friends over and stuff like that. It's just so much easier, you're going to save time, it's going to be much more accurate with your tracking. Uh, you don't have to go too crazy with it. Keep it simple. Simple is good. Alright, we're going to check our food because it's probably burning. <laughs> so we've got the burgers, we've got the chicken, we've got the pepper stir fry, asparagus, potatoes are in the oven, the chicken meatballs are in the crock pot. It's nothing crazy, this is probably, this will account for two of our meals a day. And then the other meals are just easy things we can grab on the go. So things like pasta or eggs, or eggs yogurt, stuff the like that. The pasta we really like, what else? Sometimes we'll make a tuna fish sandwich or something. So our meals do change every day. We don't eat the same thing every day. And if you are somebody who does like that, great, even better. It keeps it really easy and simple throughout the week. Um, but, you know, we'll change the stuff up too. So the way we make chicken, like sometimes we'll grill it, sometimes we'll throw it in the crock pot and make it like shredded chicken. Same thing with the burgers. Obviously there are burgers this week, but we can do ground beef, just... Tacos. Yep, tacos. I mean, throw it in the rice bowl. The options really are endless when you prep like this and then just change how you cook things or um, the seasonings and toppings that you put on them. If you're tracking your, your food and your intake, you're going to find that certain foods work better for your targets. So once you figure that out, you just have to come up with different combinations of those foods. Again, to keep things interesting so you're not doing the same thing week in and week out. Like this will be a week, um, we'll probably do this next week, something similar, and then we'll, we'll change it up every two or three weeks. But we'll have the same six or seven different meal concepts that we just rotate through to keep things interesting so it's, it's just not boring. So, save your time, it's nothing crazy, and get the job done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to comment below of any future videos you'd like us to do. Um, but we will see you in the next one. Bye!